In this video, I'm going to try to squeeze as much performance out of the Lenovo Legion Go as I can. Now, this is not recommended for battery, but you know, when you're in dock mode, plugged into the wall, maybe a larger screen, up in that TDP can really help. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what this thing can do. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. What we have here is the Lenovo Legion Go. And most of you out there are probably familiar with this handheld. It's been a little while since we've taken a look at it on the channel. And overall, I've actually really enjoyed this handheld. The detachable controllers with that FPS mode is really great. But one thing I found odd that was missing from this unit from the get-go was a proper dock mode setting. Now, of course, this does have USB 4, and they really do expect you to use a Thunderbolt or a USB 4 eGPU connected to this. You can really up that GPU performance. But a lot of people out there aren't going to invest in a Thunderbolt eGPU for the Legion Go, and we do have a little more that we can actually get out of this unit when it comes to upping the TDP on that Ryzen Z1 Extreme APU. Lenovo has done a pretty good job on updating the device, kind of optimizing everything, but those updates have come a bit slower than other handhelds on the market. And uh, right now, I'm just kind of on the latest firmware here. We've got the latest Legion Space going. And basically, what we can do is set this in custom mode, go up to 30 watts. And from 30 watts, we do have a little bit of a boost. I've seen it go up to around 35 every once in a while, and that's even plugged into the wall. But I know that we can get a little more out of this. Now, TDP isn't everything when it comes to the Ryzen Z1 Extreme, but it definitely helps out, especially with some games out there. Basically, when upping that TDP, we can send more power to this APU, therefore getting higher clocks on the CPU and higher clocks on the GPU at the exact same time. Even at 30 watts on the Z1 Extreme, it's still a little bit of a power struggle between the CPU and the iGPU. So that's why in this video, we're going to be taking this to the max. I'm actually going to be upping this to a little over 60 watts. Now, it's not as easy as some other handhelds out there, but this is one of the main tools I use to do this, and it's known as x86 Tuning Utility. Basically, we can actually adjust the TDP from within software. It's a third-party application. And out of the box with the Legion Go, you're not going to be able to go over 30 watts or 32 watts with this software. Now, anything below, we can hit that threshold just fine. But if you want to go over 30 watts with this unit, you will have to do a little bit of BIOS tweaking. And on the Legion Go, unfortunately, Lenovo has locked down the BIOS. But luckily for us, there is an application out there that we can flash to a USB drive and access all of the hidden settings from within the BIOS on the Legion Go. And it's known as Smokeless UMAP. Now, I'm not going to do a tutorial in this video. If this is something everybody's interested in, leave a comment down below. I can do a full tutorial. But basically, I've got Smokeless UMAP installed on a USB drive. We're going to boot from that USB on the Legion Go. As you can see, brings us to a totally different looking menu. And from here, we can go to all of our advanced BIOS settings. And we can access the system configuration directly from here. Out of the box, this is set at auto, but we can go up to 54 watts. And that's exactly what I've got it set to. Now I can exit. And using a third-party tuning utility like x86 Tuning Utility, we can now go over that 30-watt threshold. And even with this set at 54 watts, just using Legion Space, we can adjust it up to that 30 watts, keep handheld mode good, go down to 15. But when it's time to really plug this thing into the wall, get some better performance out of it, we've got the option. All right, so here we are in dock mode. Now this monitor does support USB Type-C video out and 65 watt PD charging, so only need that single cable. And of course, the Legion Go has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display, so it's not going to quite match up with an external monitor, being that this is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio display. So usually when I go to dock mode, I just set it up to display on the second screen. You can set it up however you'd like. It's really up to you. You can extend these if you want to. You're not going to lose any performance no matter which way you go. But personally, to get that 16 by 9 aspect ratio, I like having it like this. So yeah, in order to up the performance on the Legion Go in dock mode, we've made a couple tweaks to the BIOS using Smokeless UMAP. We've taken it up to 54 watts, just the system configuration. And from x86 Tuning Utility, I've taken it up to 64 watts. If the game can utilize all that wattage over on the CPU and GPU, then yeah, it can boost up there. But most of these games aren't going to reach 64 watts. There are a few select that really do, like Cyberpunk 2077 loves those extra cores and threads, so it can really utilize that CPU. And even with this capable of boosting up to 64 watts, benchmarks aren't going to look much better over the stock dock mode, which goes up to around 35 watts. 
but I did want to show you because we do gain a bit here. First up, Geekbench 6. At the very top, we're in 30 watt mode plugged into the wall. Single core, 2081. Multi, 10,391. It's actually a really great score for a mobile APU, but in my custom dock mode, you can see that our single core was significantly up. We're at 2,427. Multi is sitting around the same. I mean, we did gain a bit here, 10,929. I also ran 3D Mark Time Spy, and the best score I could get out of this at 30 watts plugged into the wall was 3,244. Graphic score, 2,931. And with the custom dock mode, you can see we're up to 3,416 total score, which is one of the higher scores that I've seen out of the Ryzen Z1 Extreme. Our graphic score now is 3,098. So we got a nice little jump there, and this isn't anything to scoff at. We're already working with a low-powered iGPU, so every little bit we can get out of this really does help. Now it's time to see how this thing handles gaming, and the first one we have here is Helldivers 2, and we're right over that 60 mark. It's actually pretty stable there. I got an average of 61 FPS out of this, 1080p, FSR set to performance, low settings. That's really what we've got here with an iGPU. Of course, 900p is going to net you a lot more, but the next game we have is just a built-in benchmark for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Balanced preset, 1080p, we had an average of 86 FPS. Here's Spider-Man Remastered, and keep in mind, Spider-Man Miles Morales, you're going to get the same kind of performance here. 1080p, medium settings, with IGTI, the built-in scaling option for this game, set to balanced. We had an average of 74 FPS, and uh, you know, this is just one of those games, it is hit or miss on these iGPUs. Been getting better over time, but there hasn't been a tremendous jump in performance. I also wanted to throw a fighting game in here, so I went with Mortal Kombat 1. Low settings, 1080p, FSR set to balance. Usually, I have to drop this down to 900p, but you know, since we can pull more wattage here, if you take a look at Afterburner, we're up there around 50 watts right now. It's really hitting up that CPU and GPU. So uh, keeping those clocks higher with more wattage can help out. Forza Motorsports 5 always had really good luck with this. And, you know, dropping those settings down just a bit from medium to low, you can run this at 120 hertz. It still looks good at 1080. But with the settings we have right now, no scaling, 1080p, medium settings, we had an average of 94 FPS with this. I personally don't play Fortnite, but I know a lot of people out there do, and they want a little handheld that'll handle it. Here we have it, 1080p, medium settings, and yeah, with that higher wattage, you can see it is going on up there. We had an average of 78 FPS, and keep in mind, this is 100% resolution scale, 1080p medium settings. You can play this at low, and it still looks pretty decent. Got that kind of cartoony look. So if you wanted a bit more out of it, drop those settings down, and you're good to go. And the final game we have is Cyberpunk 2077. Definitely some of the best performance that I've seen out of the Ryzen Z1 Extreme. I'm at low settings, 1080p, FSR is set to performance. Now, if you want to go over 60, that's really what you got to do on these iGPUs. Yeah. But with this, we had an average of 80 FPS, which is really great for an iGPU. And when I say low settings, I mean I go in and turn everything to low. So keep that in mind. So one thing I'd like to do is just kind of find a nice sweet spot. When the Legion Go was initially announced, we did see screenshots of Legion Space with a 48 watt profile, which was kind of going to be dock mode. I think they should definitely bring that back, or at least like a 40 watt, knowing that when we plug into power, we can get a nice little boost, because in certain games, it can really help out. Now, across the board, you're not going to see a huge jump in performance with every single game, but for games that need that little extra, this can be done using a few third-party apps. And I know it's a bit scary getting into the BIOS if you don't know exactly what you're doing here. Uh, that's really why I wasn't going to do a tutorial with this video. But if you're handy with this kind of software, then this will just give you an idea of what you can do with your Legion Go if you're looking to get the most performance in dock mode out of this handheld. Yep. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see on the Legion Go, just let me know down below. I know we've been covering a lot of other handhelds, and this one was kind of on the back burner, and it's really just because those updates from Lenovo were a bit slow compared to others. 
but they're starting to get there with this handheld and I'd like to do a full updated review. So if that's something you want to see, let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.